Good evening, friends. It's my pleasure to meet everyone here. Okay. Thank you, friends, for your support. First of all, I would like to say a warm welcome to everyone for joining our Patreon live sharing class. It is a great honor for me to be able to share with you some of my personal insights and years of experience on stock trading. Thank you once again. Before I continue, please let me inform everyone I am not a professional speaker. It is also my first time giving a class. Therefore, I may not be able to bring you a pleasant and enjoyable moment in the process of my sharing, but I promise I will try my best. Besides that, I also will definitely share my stocks trading experience which I have accumulated over the years with everyone without any reservation. If there are any flaws in my explanations, please do forgive me. Thank you very much for your understanding. Okay, today, this is the contents we are going to share. There are six topics that I'm going to share with you guys. First, we start off with our company. Petron is a global company that manages investments and is ranked among the top 100 worldwide. We are specialized in handling private equity, infrastructures, real assets, and private credits. Our main job is to invest our clients' funds wisely by finding and making the best investments. Right now, we are getting ready to open an office in India. We are looking for support from high net worth individuals and some institutions in the Indian market. Our aim is to help these individuals to grow their money quickly, both online and offline. We are confident about it because many clients have already experienced substantial growth in their wealth over the past few months. Next, we are talk about India. You guys might ask, why did we choose India? Alright? Okay, let me share some information. India's rapid growth over the years has long attracted the attention of capital from around the world. More and more international capital has entered or will enter the market. And we are no exceptions. India has many advantages that other countries in the world do not have. You guys might ask, what other advantages India have? Let me share some points with you. Point number one, India has the best growth potential compared to all major markets, both economically and in terms of underlying corporate earnings. Point number two, India is already the most populous country in the world with abundant labor force, but its demographic dividends is far from being fully utilized. And last, in the long run, India does perform well, and foreign investment is expected to reap returns because there is still room for foreign institution investors to increase their investments. Next, we will briefly share India's advantages in early stage of the development. As I mentioned earlier, India has become the world's most populous country. This is according to a data released by the United Nations on 19 April 2023. India's population is now 1.428 billion, which is slightly higher than China's at 1.425 billion. We have surpassed China and become the world's most populous country. Besides that, do you guys know half of India's population is actually under the age of 30? India is expected to become the world's fastest growing major economy in the coming years. A very important point here is that 
that the age structure of the population is getting younger. Okay, let's move on. Next point, India robust economy. India is doing really very well in, in terms of its economy. In the first quarter of the fiscal year 2023, it has become the fifth largest economy beating United Kingdom. The total economic output or the real GDP was about 40.37 trillion rupees which is around 484.94 billion. This shows a growth of 7.8% compared to the same period of last year. The service sector, which includes things like restaurants, tourism and entertainment, is expected to be a big part of this growth. This is because more people are getting vaccinated and there are pent up demands for services that was limited during the COVID-19 pandemic. India is also doing well in terms of exports. With an estimated value of 376.29 billion from April to September this year. This is supported by people feeling more confident, more jobs created, and an increase in people spending money. All these factors are expected to help Indian economy growth in the coming years. As for some of our friends, you guys might not be very familiar with the economic data. In fact, by looking at all this data, everyone should feel that India development is potential. Next, we will be talk about economic growth. Usually, economic growth of a country mainly depends on three aspects. Which are the three aspects? They are investment, export, and consumption. Next, we will take a look at the specific situation of these three aspects in India. We start off with investment. It's, this refers to the capital expenditure made by businesses, governments, and individuals. It includes spending on physical capital like machineries and infrastructures, as well as investments in research and development. Growth in domestic investments is one of the most important contributors to India economic growth. Domestic investment is actually divided into two parts. Which two parts? Part one, domestic invest, uh, public investments, which is government, government built roads, schools, and other important things that benefit everyone. Part two, private investment. As for private investment, it also split into two parts. Household investments, which families spend money on things like home or education. Corporate investment. Companies invest in new technologies, factories or other improvements. Some factors that are affecting private investments. Whether businesses and families want to invest their money depends on these five things. Stability which is the overall income, our overall economy, is it stable? Savings. Are people saving enough money for future investments? Productivity. Businesses using their resources efficiently to make better things. Access to credit. Can people get, or businesses get loans or invest to invest? And last of all, fixing problems. What is fixing problems? meaning bad debts, or having a messy financial records. So, when you hear about India's economic growth, it often depends on people and businesses investing money to make things better. And these investments are influenced by how the stable the economy is. 
how much people are saving, how efficiently businesses are working, and other similar factors. India's private investment sector has also shown signs of maturing over the past few years. The market shows that new investments account for about 50% of venture capital transactions. The VC to PE pipeline has also become robust and consistent. Domestic and foreign investments in India go hand in hand to help the country to develop. Foreign investments. This is when people or businesses from other countries invest money in India. They do this because they see opportunities in our growing economy. Some information I would like to share with you. In April, Apple opens two new retail stores in Delhi and Mumbai. On the same month, another big company, Samsung, also announced that they will set up 15 premium experience stores across India by end of the year in all major cities. Besides that, global investors such as Blackstone Group and APG Asset Management have injected more money into shopping mall business to take advantage on consumer spending growth. So, now the question is, why do we need both of them? Well, when a country like India is growing, it wants to use the latest or the best technologies. But sometimes, we might not have all these technologies on our own. That's where foreign investors come in. They bring in their knowledge and the latest technologies. Now, another question. So why is investing so important? Because only when investments grow, whether it's basic industry or advanced technology industries, they can develop more rapid and create a large number of jobs. And don't forget, India now is the most populous country in the world, with large amount of population around. More jobs are created for them. Okay? Next topic will be move on to export. Export refers to an act of sending or services produced in one country to another country for the purpose of selling or trading. Countries engage in export to earn foreign exchange, simulate economic growth, utilize surplus production, and enhance competitiveness in the global market. Export can include a wide range of products, such as goods, services, or even technologies. And they play a crucial role in shaping the economic dynamics of a nation. In fact, petroleum products are India's largest export. Over 14% of the country's total export value in India. The country's location is in Middle East. Along with its strategic refinery capabilities, makes it a major player in the global oil trade. Besides pet refined petroleum, India also exports other things. Let's take a look what other things they export. They also export diamonds, packaged medicaments, jewelries, and rice. And for your info, India is the second largest producer for rice. Okay? And you guys might think, where do India export to? I'll use some example. India exports to United States, United Arab Emirates, which is the UAE, China, Bangladesh, and Hong Kong. Next, we will be talking about consumption. Consumption refers to the private 
final consumption expenditure, which is PFCE, which consists of two segments, public consumption and private consumption. The consumption of goods and services by households is a significant component of economic activity. Increased consumer spending can drive demand, simulate production, and lead to overall economic expansion. Public consumption refers to the expenditure made by government or public authorities on goods and services. This includes spending on public services such as education, health care, infrastructure, defense, and government program. Public consumption is a component of government expenditure and aim at enhancing the overall well-being and quality of life for the citizens of India. Private consumption refers to the expenditure made by individuals and households on goods and services for personal use. This includes the spending by private individuals on such things like food, clothing, housing, healthcare, entertainment and other goods and services for personal certification and well-being. Private consumption is a critical component of a country's overall economic activity and is often influenced by some factors such as income levels, consumer confidence, and economic condition. The private final consumption expenditure, which is also known as PFCE, is defined as the expenditure incurred by the resident's household and non-profit institutions serving households. On final consumption of goods and services, whether made within or outside economic territory. India's consumer market is set to become the world's large, third largest by 2027, as the number of middle to high income households rises, according to a report by BMI. It actually can be seen from this chart that Indian's consumption has grown very fast in the past 10 years. Okay? Consumption is a very important driving force for economic growth, whether it is household consumption or social consumption. All products are produced by factories. And I share this data with you not to make everyone to become an economist, but just to let everyone have a better understanding the development situation in India. So as to help our stock investments, choices that we choose, and our career. So, please spare some time to think about this. What I have mentioned is all interconnected together. With high export, high consumption, high investments, and being the world largest population, Will the economy of India rise? Okay? Industrial development. The reason why India's economy can develop strongly is inseparable from its own industrial layout and development. Let me give you a few examples. One, high-tech industries such as information technologies and biomedicine are developing rapidly. Two, the service industry represented by culture and firm is developing rapidly. Point number three, automobile industry is highly competitive. I will talk about the research and specific industry later. Today, I just brief briefly let you guys understand okay 
I know many friends are actually more concerned about the individual stocks. Please, please be patient. Okay, I will analyze the stocks that recommended to everyone very, very soon. Okay, let's move on. Rapid GPT growth, which is an India GTP. India's GTP and in GPT growth rate can develop rapidly. We can take a closer look. This chart you see comes from Goldman Sachs. Everyone should know who they are. They are a very, very famous international investment bank. With a population of 1.4 billion people, its GDP is forecast to expand dramatically. Goldman Sachs Research projects India will have the world's second largest economy by 2075. You can see from the graph, Starting from 2020, India will rise rapidly straight up the chart. Okay, it's a curve. Okay, it's a curve shooting up to here. Wow, the rest of the other markets are rising in a constant pace. For example, Japan, Europe areas, even US, the USA. They are rising, but in a straight line. But as for India, it is it potential to rose up to be the second largest, just behind China. Okay, let's take a look at this chart. This is India's gross GDP from 1987 to 2028, calculated at the current price. This is the graph pre previously predicted. In fact, as of now, India GDP has exceeded 4 trillion US dollars, which means that India's GDP growth has exceeded people's expectations. It's amazing how fast it's developing. Okay? We'll move on to the next topic, which is a lucky draw event. On 1st of December, Petron Ventures decided to show appreciation to our supporters in India with a gratitude give back campaign. We aim to boost our reputation and market awareness. During that video conference at our headquarters, we resolved to launch an online education platform through live classes and also organize a lucky draw. To join the lucky draw event, please follow my assistant's instructions and send screenshots of the lectures. This is open to everyone and with over 60,000 group members, we want to enhance our presence in India market. I will share my investment experience and help improve your trading skills through a systematic learning. As for the lucky draw, it is based on first come, first serve. We will use a survey response for the draw, notarized by the notary office. Winners will be notified promptly and prizes will be delivered at no cost to you. Rest assured, there are no expenses on your part. So I repeat myself again, guys, there will be no cost. On your part, there is no cost. So we will deliver it to you. Okay? Let's move on to take a look at the prices. The event date for the lucky draw. Starting today, 10th of December, 2023 to 20 December 2023. Okay, so the first price is Xiaomi 13 Pro, total of 10 units. The second price will be Xiaomi Smart TV, 
X50 2023 edition total of 30 units third price will be Redmi Pad total of 100 units and for fourth price is a Mi Air Purifier 2C total of 300 units and for the last price which is the fifth price will be Amazon Shopping Voucher worth of 300 rupees total of 5,000 units okay let's move on market analysis we just share with you the strong development of Indian economy stocks are a barometer of a real economy it is exactly because of the strong development in of the India economy that the stock market has risen over the years it can also be seen from the graph the graph okay that it has risen for about 20 times in 30 years and even nifty index will rise even more the key issue is that both Indian economy and the stock market are booming and we have huge potential as I just say it's a super bull for 30 years and it will continue to do so there's this guy named Timothy Mo he is the chief Asia Pacific strategies at Goldman Sachs say that the investment for India has continued to be structural positive because the country has a strong economic and underlying corporate earnings profile compared with all major markets it has an optimal growth potential the investment bank said that for 2024 the base case for NFT is 21,800 points. In fact, our confidence in India stock market is stronger because Nifty currently now is at 20,969 points. Next, we are looking at Sensex chart. Okay, this is a weekly chart of Sensex. Taking the example of Sensex index, after hitting a low in June 2022, okay, it took 24 weeks to rose. On March this year, 2023, it hit bottom again. It took about 25 weeks to rise up. Now, in October, it also hit bottom and we expected the duration of this subsequent rise will likely to be more than 20 weeks. Considering a similar rise of 24 weeks, the current rise is expected to start early November and continue until late April of 2024. However, this doesn't mean that the bull market will end after the rise. Instead, it will likely to enter a period of correction followed by a new rising trend and the cycle will continue. Additionally, the previous 24 week and 25 week rises follow a specific pattern which is a A, B, C pattern which is over here A, B, C A, B, C so we expected to have the same pattern and history is likely to repeat itself therefore the next rise will probably follow the similar pattern this is also a Sinsex weekly chart 
Regarding the outward target, using Sensex also as an example, after hitting low in June, which is last year, 2022, the index rose by 25%. We should hear to hear 25%. After hitting a low again in March this year, it took it rose about 19%. Therefore, if we assume the outward percentage is 20% after hitting a low in October 2023, the SINSEC index will rise to around 75,711, or which is 120% of 63,092. So we expected the upward trend of Sinsex index in 2024 to be around 75,700. As of now, we are already 69,825. Since India has implemented the system reform, the Nifty and Sinsex index have increased more than 20 times in the past 30 years. Currently, the India economy is growing rapidly and global giants are increasing their investments in India. Although uncertainty in the market still exists, of course, there is a certain degree of uncertainty in every market. But signs of optimism are everywhere. And we have the reason to believe that super bull market in India market will continue. All of us are born in this era. We should actually take full advantage of the super bull market in India to grow our personal wealth or create financial freedom, not only for us, but also for our family. After all, a person's life is short and I believe everyone wants to make money fast and early so that they can live their life they wanted and provide a better future for their family. Therefore, there are not many opportunities to witness a Super Bowl market in a person's life. So if you cannot make full use of such opportunities, then we might need to wait for the next 30 years. Okay, now let's move on to the next topic that everyone is waiting for. Okay, I have these other stocks that actually I recommended. We start off with CUB, City Union Bank. City Union Bank is one of the leading private sector commercial banks in India, with its primary business spread across urban, semi urban, and rural centers in the southern part of the country. The company's financial performance has been quite good with record high revenue in 2023. What is more impressive is that its net profit, which has been steadily increasing for the past four years and reached a new high in 2023. The stock has spent nearly four years forming a significant support between 110 rupees and 120. With the moving average diverging upwards, indicating a standard bullish trend, this recent rise is just beginning from the bottom area, showing great potential. Therefore, it's safe to hold the stock until there's a clear sign of a temporary top. Okay, top. Let's move on to next. Okay, next stop. Star Health. This is a daily chart. Star Health is an India first independent health insurance provider to extend coverage to include health, personal accidents, and overseas travel insurance. It offers policies customized 
to the needs of individuals, family, and companies. Star Health is one of the largest private health insurance company in India. We can observe that the company's revenue has been increasing year by year, especially with a significant leap starting in 2022. Although the net profit of the fiscal year of 2021 and 2022 was negative, but 2023 marks a fundamental turning point. As for the reason behind the negative profits in 2021 and 2022, we all remember the impact of the previous two years' pandemic. The increase of the expenses due to the pandemic was unexpected force that affect the company's operations rather than issues with the company's own management. From a technical perspective, the stock has clear support at the bottom, which is over here. Okay, With no room for the stock price to fall, it's currently forming a bottom and is far from a rapid rise point. Regarding this stock, a few days ago when it was falling, some friends were worried and sent me private messages to us. Of course, I understand. There are many friends who are new and not familiar with my trading style. So this is understandable. After all, everyone trades stocks is to make money. Okay? But from my point of view, I have a question for everyone. Is it that everyone cannot bear with such a small fluctuation? If we can't bear this, then how can we make more money in the future? How can we achieve our financial freedom? You should know that if you want to make big money, you must be able to bear with big fluctuations. If you are not willing to bear large fluctuations, then I can only say, you can only make small money or no money at all. Friends, please ask yourself, what do you really want? And how much you want to make? And since Petron came to India, which stock that I recommend has not been profitable when you guys saw it. Friends that have been following me from the start should know it very clearly about this. Even for a stock like Star Health, the current price movement is around our cost price. For those who have bought this stock, there's no need for you to be worried or afraid. Just continue to hold the stock and we'll be fine. Let's move on to the next stock. Kandabil, Retail India uh, Limited is engaged in design, manufacturing, branding, promotion and retail business of the Kandabil and La Fanso clothing brands. Despite that, its operating capability is very good, showing strong performance in terms of revenue, net profit, and earnings per share. Leaving aside other aspects, because they have been already been discussed earlier, today I want to mention the trading volume. The recent candlestick chart of the last five trading days clearly show a significant increase in volume. With large trading volume in nearly two years, obviously, this indicates the large funds are entering the market. And large funds referring to funds like institutional investors and all organizations. What does the entrance of large funds mean? As long as they do not withdraw, the price will continue to rise. Remember, these large funds can actively 
drive the price up. And we should never under underestimate their impact. Although individual investors make up the majority in terms of quantity, due to various unbalanced conditions, individual investors can never change in the stock prices. Okay. From the weekly chart, we need to pay attention to two points. Point number one, on the weekly time frame, there is two consecutive bullish candles. What do these two candles mean? This is related to the content we just discussed. Okay? These two candles. The fast line and the slow line of the MACD indicator have already cross above the zero line. Similarly, this is the content we just learned about. For, so for this stock, the technical targets on the upside are around 280 rupees and 320 rupees. Next, I'm going to talk about classic tactics. Okay, friends, let's move on to trading tactics. I believe a lot of you are interested. Many friends often actually private message me and ask me to share more of trading skills. Now, our live sharing class has officially begun. In future, I will continue to share with you my investment experience that I have accumulated over the years during Wall Street times. I hope that everyone can improve together and let us go further together. Okay, first of first and the most basic practical technique I will share with you today is support and resistance. You guys may often see these two words in some places, but can you really use them to your advantage? Or do you know how to trade using support and resistance? Where can we find this support or resistance? Therefore, next, I will explain to you in details. Okay, for friends that have certain trading foundation, you guys can sit back and relax and review and listen. And for those who do not have any idea about it, please listen carefully. So what is support and resistance? Support is also known as a support line. It refers to a point, a price point, where prices stop falling and there may even be a rebound. The price level acts as a barrier to prevent further decline or temporarily halt the decline price. As for resistance, Resistance is also known as a resistor 9. Refers to the price point where prices stop rising and even fall back. The price level acts as a barrier to prevent or temporary halt for the prices increases. The function of the support and support uh, resistor 9 is to prevent or temporarily prevent the price from continue to move in one direction. If you realize support and resistance, they are similar. They are just opposite of each other. Okay? And this is actually very simple. Am I right? Okay. Now we move on to horizontal support. Actually, we have a lot of uh, different kind of support. Horizontal support is one of a kind. Okay. So, in fact, there are different kinds of support and resistance. Let's take a look at the first one first, which is horizontal support. Let's look at the picture. I choose to use uh, this Tata Motors as a case to explain. 
And of course, we all know Tata is actually a very, very good company. Okay, let's take a look at the picture. The picture size of point number one, two, three, four, and five. The places are basically at the same level. Okay, you can take a look over here about the same level. If you can connect point number one and point number two in a straight line, it becomes a support line, which is here. Okay, it can no longer fall, the price never fall. Then it starts to rise. Because of this line is horizontal, that is why we call it horizontal support. It's because it's a straight line. And it shoot up. Okay. The next support we'll be talking about is uptrend support. Since there is horizontal support, there is also something called uptrend support. It should be noted here that there is definitely no downtrend support. Think about it. Why is it so? Similarly, we can see the position mark 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is over here. <laughs> point number 1 and point number 2 are connected in a straight line. Okay, it becomes a support. But it's going up. So that's why we call it an uptrend. Uptrend support. One thing to note, it actually doesn't matter which stock we use as a case for explanation. So guys, do not need to worry about it because in the stock market, I can actually use a lot of other uh, companies, for example. And in future, I actually will use other companies, for examples, to let everyone have a clear idea about what we are sharing. Okay? It's for learning purpose. Next, we are moving on to horizontal resistance. Look at the resistance again. Resistance also have horizontal resistance. This is very easy to understand. They have the same effect on the price, but they are the opposite directions. Point number one and point number two also collected in a straight line, which forms a resistance line. Then, when we form a resistance line, you can see the suppress of the price cause the price to fall. Okay? That's why you can see point number one, point number two, and point number three. You can draw a straight line. And the price start to fall. Let's move on. Okay. Look at this picture. This is downtrend resistance line. Just now, I asked you guys a question. Why is there no downtrend support? Correct? You should understand from this graph when you see the picture. Because downtrend can only be resistance and cannot be a support. Same goes for point number one, point number two, and point number three. They form a straight line. And it's a downtrend, so that's why it's a resistance. It cannot be a support. Okay? Next. Now that I have learned, or uh, you guys have learned the basic concepts and the types of support and resistance, here comes the crucial and critical question, which is, how to use it? Alright? Speaking of which, it's very, it's actually very simple. That is, when 
to uh, we have to buy at support level and sell at resistant resistant level okay just like this chart you can see one two three and four so the price reach at point number three we start to buy and I repeat myself I say I should buy okay but why did I say should because it's actually a trading process when the price drop to the support line its technical form is often unsightly even a bit scary and many investors simply cannot get over it I know I should buy but I don't dare to buy okay there are people investors that thinking whether will the price continue to drop if I buy if I buy if it drop how these kind of questions I believe some of you guys have experienced before this kind is called psychology experience and those friends who use this kind of techniques to trade definitely have experienced this kind of psychology process of course this is the fun part of trading okay next we'll be looking at resistance as I say for support we'll buy alright so how about resistance as for resistance we rarely use this trading technique because as long as a downward resistance line is formed or generated we will not buy the stock in many cases why because there is only a downward resistance line on the graph in fact the technical trend is often in line with the short trend and we should not buy the stock at this time it's not the right time to buy the stock but of course there are two special situations that we will buy first if you are a short term trading expert I mean short term trading expert okay point number two when the stock price of a good company is far below in its inherent value we can indeed buy the stocks regardless of what the technical graph of the company stock look like okay the buying and selling method here are both inclined support or resistance as for the horizontal type it's very easy it's just a straight line you guys take some time go and review on your own okay and okay friends today live sharing class will end here thank you very much for your strong support and remember to take the screenshots of the live sharing class and complete the questionnaire and then send it to my assistance to enroll for the lucky draw to inform everyone our next class will be on Tuesday 12 December 2023 8 p.m. I hope to see everyone here thank you once again for your support and good night